Um, I uh, Arup did a presentation last year, or I'm sorry, two years ago now, it's now 2011, uh, and the title of his presentation was CPU and I.O. are necessary for rack performance. It's not, and he was not saying the interconnect is not important, um, but it's, it's, it's only one component. Um, it is a new component. But when you go to do tuning, and there's another Lawson, uh, a Lawson paper from last year, this is the same thing. When you go to do tuning on a rack system, you really start in the same place, which is you start with the same questions. Why, you know, what is it that's taking too long? Somebody calls you and says, well, the application is slow. OK, well, what is slow? What are you doing that's slow? Is it a report? Is it a page? Is it a screen? Um, and then what is it spending its time doing? Um, go ahead and move to the next slide. Now, when you, uh, when you do performance tuning, when you have, or maybe performance troubleshooting, I think, is a, better, uh, is a better term because it helps us avoid the compulsive tuning disorder where you just keep trying and trying and trying to make it better when really there's not a problem anymore. Um, if it isn't broke, don't try to fix it is a good, a good rule of thumb to remember. Um, but when you do troubleshoot, there's two general approaches, and I, I just kind of quickly put this slide together, but I think it's helpful as an introduction that you sometimes look at things from the top down, you sometimes look at things from the bottom up, and really you'll probably do both of these um, over the course of time. I suspect, though, that you probably will spend more time doing the top down approach, but the bottom up is very important because it can make a big difference with a very a small amount of effort if, if there are things to, to, uh, to look at. What I mean by top-down is that you're starting by looking at the application, or even better, by the end user. Um, Harry Millsap likes to say the best way to, the fastest way to do something is to not do it at all. <laughs> and that's, that's very, very true. And that's, uh, again, something you always need to remember, looking at the end user. Sometimes you can refactor a process if that's possible, not always possible, um, to make something go much more quickly. And if you can just not do something at all, that is the fastest way to get it done. Um, a top-down approach, you, you begin by looking at the application, and then you kind of dig down from there. Um, and your goals are going to be related to response time or, or throughput. It should say minimizing response time or maximizing throughput, depending on what you're doing. If it's a batch job, you might be more focused on throughput um, than you are in response time. If it's a, a user interactive type of thing, then response time is very important. There's a couple tools that you might use to do this right out of the box. Um, Oracle has database console or grid control. Um, you can also, uh, and some of these are cost options. You have to purchase them uh, in addition to the basic database licenses. But Oracle has, a, has a, in part of their web console, they have a performance view where you can see where the database is spending its time. Um, you have, it's your job to instrument your application so you can see where the application is spending its time. Services, modules, and actions can help with that a little bit, uh, taking advantage of that. Um, there are also some third-party tools. We, we didn't end up getting any screenshots. Um, Burton and I talked about it, but then uh, just the time kind of ran out. So unfortunately, I don't have a screenshot of grid control. Um, uh, uh, Bert will probably mention later, he works for Quest, and uh, the company Quest makes a great product. Um, as well as uh, Embarcadero makes a good product, um, CA makes a good product. There's also one called Lab 128 that's uh, made by a very smaller group. So there's a number of products out there that also uh, give you a nice insight into where your application is spending its time or where the time is being spent at the database. Um, and then, of course, uh, StatsPack, and it, now they're called AWR reports. They used to be called StatsPack. Um, if, uh, you, if, if you've been around Oracle for a very long time, you might remember when they were called BSTAT, and I think he used that or something else, um, which, which predates even StatsPack. Um, but, but those are also, uh, I would consider, part of the top-down approach of looking at time. Um, you know, that's probably a good starting point. Uh, the bottom-up approach, and generally when I work with a customer, I do a combination of both. Uh, the bottom-up approach focuses more on looking at utilization of your system. And your goal with the bottom-up approach is to balance and maximize your utilization. So are you evenly using all the spindles that you have available? Are you evenly using the paths and the controllers that are available? At the OS perspective, um, 
at the OS perspective, you might ask uh, what your network latencies are, which will tell you about your interconnect, um, or even your storage if you're using uh, iSCSI or something, your I.O. times, memory utilization, and CPU utilization. Is there anything else I wanted to mention on this slide? Yes. Um, so, oh, I was going to just give a quick example of this. Um, the a customer I'm working with right now, or, or just recently worked with, not right now, but just recently, um, they had me come in, uh, and they had a system where there were some performance problems. It was a smaller system, and one of their big question was, this is not a rack system, but we want to know if we should buy rack, and if we should get rack, if that's going to help fix our problem. Um, we, we did look both, I, we took and looked both from the top and the bottom, and when we looked at it from the top, we found about two or three reports that were performing very poorly and used a lot of um, accesses, and from the bottom we saw a crazy amount of I.O. utilization. Um, what, we, what we were able to do in this situation was, first of all, for, those, for two or three of the reports, just simply rewriting the SQL, uh, and uh, in one case, um, there was uh, sort of one table that was being joined in through an exists clause, and by sort of unnesting that and pulling that out to the top, which the optimizer was not able to do, we were able to give the, that particular report about a 10 or 20-fold speed up. Um, but then we also saw a lot of I.O. utilization from the bottom-up perspective. And we, we looked at it and we said, well, you, you're hard, you have a lot of more space. You could cache a lot more things in memory. So we increased the amount of cache. By doing that, we completely eliminated the I.O. entirely, sped up the entire system very, very quickly. Um, the end of the story was that th there was absolutely no need for them to go to rack because by just addressing a couple basic performance things, we sort of realized that we could get a lot more performance out of the existing hardware that they have without investing a lot of money. And then as a growth path, um, we were able to get more CPUs in this box still. We were able to still get more memory in it before we had to add the complexity. And that's the same approach that you take even on a rack system. You need to know about the new things, the, and we've talked about those today. The interconnect is huge. You need to know about that. Uh, you need to understand what the uh, weight events are that are related to this. Um, but your basic approach to tuning is, is really essentially the same. You're going to look at I.O., you're going to look at network, you're going to look at memory and CPU. And then from the top down, you're going to look at weight events, you're going to look at time, and where are you spending your time, or what is the throughput that you're getting. Okay, next slide. Um, I'm just going to quickly buzz through this slide and the next one. Just from an application perspective, uh, a couple of things that you might want to look out for, um, indexes, sequences, hot rows, or small tables. Um, manual segment space management um, is... And there's nothing, if you're using that, it needs to be configured correctly for rack. For the most part, I think uh, most people are using automatic segment space management now, and that's what I think is generally recommended. Um, but if a system has manual space management, uh, that's not necessarily bad, but you need to make sure that you're using enough free list groups in particular. Um, any weight events that have the letters GC in them um, are usually tied uh, the, when you see those weight events, those usually mean that it's something related to the interconnect or something cluster specific. Um, and again, high interconnect utilization also. Go to the next slide. Oh, Jeremy, before you go to that next slide, I wanted to mention a couple items. On, on looking out for indexes, one of the things that can happen in a rack environment is that reverse order indexes can actually be quite useful to help reduce block contention across nodes or indexes. Uh, the reason sequences are mentioned is if you make the sequence cache is too large, then uh, what happens is there's a lot more communication between the nodes on understanding uh, when it's time to get their next allotment of sequences, where they're supposed to start. Um, and so those two items are pretty critical. Uh, I just wanted to give a little more detail. Yeah, thanks, Bert. That's true. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so indexes and sequences are things to look out for. Um, and so how do you address these things? Uh, the main principle that you want to look for is to parallelize as much as possible. And a, a very, very good thing to remember, uh, generally speaking, um, you know, Tariq mentioned that you don't necessarily have to customize your application for Rack. And that's Oracle markets very heavily that, like, any application that runs on Oracle will run on Rack. And that's a little bit true, and it's a little bit false. 
Um, the reason is if you write a bad application and it and it doesn't scale anyway, then it's not going to. And then your problems will probably be even worse on a rack system. So if your application has problems on a normal system, the problems will probably get worse on rack. Uh, so as a general rule, if it doesn't scale on SMP, meaning lots of processors, 16, 32, 64 processors, then it's not going to scale on rack, and it's going to be even worse. So your principles of application design are, are really actually very similar, again, for non-rack and for rack. But there are certain areas around uh, serialization and contention that are exasperated by rack. So some of those are if you have a high number of rows per block, and that can cause sort of a, a hot table like I mentioned before, uh, you address that by trying to decrease the number of rows per block. There are a number of ways to do that. Um, Bert's going to mention a few of those later specifically. Uh, for indexes, um, it, it, the very leading edge of an index can run very hot. Um, that's where all the, the new inserts are going on a, heavy, a heavily inserted table. Um, one possible solution to that is reverse key indexes or hash indexes, but you do need to be careful with those because uh, you lose some functionality when you reverse an index or if you use hashes. In particular, you can't do range scans, which in some cases the reason you have an index is to do a range scan. Sequences, if it's possible to have your sequence be no order, um, that can be a, a huge benefit. Um, sometimes sequences need to be in order. Uh, and then you need to just be very careful about tuning it and watching the cache size, as Bert mentioned. Um, using automatic segment space, segment space management. Um, partitioning, uh, as a final point, um, it, partitioning is just another way to parallelize uh, when you think about it. Um, and you can partition both data and indexes. And even furthermore, it's possible to partition at the application level as well. And sometimes that's just the best thing to do because it's simplest. The, the way that Facebook manages to run a massive application on um, MySQL is they partition the application. They, they, uh, they have, and, and that's essentially what, the, it's at the application level. So certain kinds of tables go to this group of nodes, other certain types of tables. So maybe your notes pages goes one place. The status updates go to another group of machines that handle status. And you can do a similar. You can do a similar thing with Rack, where you say, "Well, even I have three applications on this cluster, but I'm just going to have each application use one node. And if they don't share any data, then you've eliminated your interconnect problems because none of that data will be shot across the nodes." So with that, I'm going to hand off to Bert, and he's going to talk a little bit more in depth about sort of whole system tuning. I am going to mention one thing from some of the prior slides, but we can stay here. Um, Jeremy brought up stats pack of the old UTLB stat, NE stat, and then of course the AWR and Adam reports. Um, the stats pack ones are not rack aware. So even though they may help you tune a particular instance, they're not going to see the system from the 50 foot thousand uh, level. Uh, and likewise, even with the Adam and AWR, uh, in version 10, they're not rack aware, and in version uh, 11, I think release one, they are. 